minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Tonight, Harriet Thorpe, Sam Redford, Potter Vision Podcast, Len Grant, Way Lips Literature. Well, a very good evening to each and every one of you joining me, Miss Belinda Scandal, and me, Michelle Eagleton. It's great to be back. Oh my goodness me, where the heck have you been? Oh, you know, kind of painting my tail, uh, my tail, my toenails. <laughs> my tail, <laughs> giving it all away. Oh, and so it begins. You're painting your toenails. It's, it's, when did we last have you here? No, H Happy New Year! H Happy New Year, cocker! Have you still kept any of your New Year's resolutions? Absolutely none of them. <laughs> I do not see the point in resolutions when all I'm trying to do each year is be me. Oh, bless you. Mm -hmm. You have got a new edition, haven't you? I have got a new edition yeah. and he's at home watching this, hopefully. Maybe I should bark. Go on, bark. <laughs> see if he's... <laughs> He makes, he makes a noise when any dog comes on the telly because obviously this is my dog I'm talking about, not my husband. I'm um, saying notes. He's gorgeous. Not my husband, the dog. The, but, yes. Yeah. Well, now you've just said your husband's not gorgeous. Oh, it, it's all right. I could always upgrade. Can't we all, Cocker? Can't we all? On tonight's show, everybody, we have got a massive show lined up for you. We've got... Um, a very wonderful actor uh, and friend of the show, Sam Redford. Oh, it's so good to be on this show, to be back chatting to Sam, yeah. Uh, we are also talking about these two sensational books, everybody. <laughs> there they are. Can They're brilliant. Them? They're by a guy called Len Grant and uh, he's joining us later. He's going to be joining us later. Uh, we, we, have, we have just got a plethora and we're also keeping with books because we're talking about uh, queer literature today as well. Which yeah, is and there's a great story behind why that started. So uh, well, I think we're going to have a really nice chat later. We are, as always. We want you lot to get involved. It's so good to have you back. I can't tell you. No, even though there's a perspex group, it's still wonderful. It do, really is. Do you know it's nearly been a year since we had a cuddle? Oh, don't. The days of cuddles, how I ache for them. I know. They have brought these screens out where you can put your hands in and they've got gloves on and you can cuddle, but it's not kind of the same, is it? It's that? not, but my dog does give me lots of cuddles, so yes. that's, that's helping right now. I can lend him out to you. Can you Although is that allowed? Can. Are you allowed to lend dogs out? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what you're allowed to do anymore. What I do know is we're allowed to start believing in America a little bit now, boys and girls, aren't we? Yes, oh. indeed! Did you watch the inauguration? I did. It was very emotional. Was it good? Yeah, and about time too. Yeah, I right know. So long, Trump. So long, Trump. Well, they call him Trump for a reason. Uh, we're going to carry on with the show. Before we do, though, if you do want to get in contact with us for any reason or any questions to ask any of our guests, this is how you do it. <laughs> Your Manchester. So there you go, get in contact with us on all the usual socials and tell us exactly what you want to know. In the meantime, let us meet uh, a guest that's, again, has not been with us for forever. This is I know, but we have seen some of his stuff already on telly. Yes. And that short film, which I'm sure he's going to talk about uh, right now. Indeed, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Sam Retford. Woo! Hello, everyone. Hello, Sam. Yeah, it's lovely to see you again. Uh, it's finally nice to see your house. I think the only part of your house that I have seen is your bedroom, but that's another story altogether, everybody, for yeah, a late no. divulgence. Do you know what I'm oh, liking, okay. Sam? Is I'm liking the beard. Is that a oh. lockdown thing? No, this is a this is a job thing. This is uh, this is for work. It uh, it'll go soon, but uh, but yeah, keeping it till uh, till mid Feb. 
Oh. It's very good. So are you keeping it for a reason then you are, yes? Yes, keeping it for work. I'm going and uh, riding some horses in a couple of weeks. Because so. it does look a bit like period drama. I was going to say very Shakespearean. I was thinking Three Musketeers, something like that. <laughs> what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, while you're watching this interview, if you watch Sam's eyebrows, all the questions we're not meant to ask, he'll answer with an eyebrow. All right, <laughs> This is the way he does it. It's the way we've done it for two years now. Uh, so we've got to first of all talk about the fact that I never knew you were actually from Australia originally. Mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is where the whole accent thing comes from. This is where all the crazy accents going all over the place are from, I think, because I was originally was very, I was very Aussie, especially after a few wines or a couple of whiskeys, you know, full-blown <laughs> Aussie. And then, uh, and then I kind of hid that because, you know, you get bullied for, for all sorts of skills. So, uh, so I hid that and then, uh, and then the man came and then all sorts happened. Yeah. Wow. Would you ever go back? Yeah, I probably would. I'm, I'm, I miss it. I miss, I miss the wildlife for me. I'm, I'm a massive nature freak. So, uh, so yeah. As soon as the first thing I did when I came to the UK was, uh, was, was, um, we've got a snake. I've got a pet snake because I wanted to. That's the one thing about the UK. You know, beautiful forests, beautiful lakes, but nothing. nothing there's nothing out there that's going to kill you. So it kind of takes the fun away from the wild camping a bit. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would love to go there. We don't want anything to affect you, Sam, because at the moment, your career is going from strength to strength. And we're lucky that we've seen you grow because you've been on our show quite a few times. Oh, now, you guys Ackley have been there Bridge, from the start. I know, was one of the first where we had one from. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to say, big shout out to my cousin's daughter. You've got a massive fan in a girl called Bethany. She's watched every program of Ackley Bridge and you're one of her favourites so can oh, you say definitely. hello to Bethany? Absolutely, hello Bethany, sending lots of love Oh you're Sam. so sweet Sam, oh. you really are so sweet. Yeah, but then you've moved on to loads since then. Yes. Sam, that uh, short movie we yeah. premiered before December, wasn't it, in the last program? Brilliant. Yeah, What's been hopefully, the most... hopefully you guys will, will be able to see that. It's just kind of doing the um, festival circuit at the minute, so hopefully, and I, I'm not allowed to an announce yet, but hope, you know, hopefully you guys will be able to see it. It's been over in America, but um, but yeah, it's coming over to the UK for a bit, so it, we'll be able to. Is that one of the things uh, you're most proud of, then, Sam? Definitely, I think you've that done was so the, the best thing I've ever filmed and been a part of, and it means so much to me because it's about kind of. Uh, disability representation of my brother's got cerebral palsy and I've kind of always grown up around disability and stuff so uh, making that film with the the boys Lloyd and Neil who I don't know if anyone came to but it was actually where I met you guys was um, it was behind the team behind Closets the musical that we did at Hope yeah. Mill uh, so the lovely boys Lloyd and Neil who are the writers and directors of the Closets also wrote and directed this fantastic film that hopefully this year we're going to turn into a feature um, but yeah in the meantime it'd be great if you guys can see the short but I'm sure it'll come soon it's just going about the festivals but yeah it's a beauty uh, film it's great this year you uh, and last year certainly you didn't really um, sit at home on your laurels did you you were keeping extremely extremely busy just going off your, your Instagram alone you seem to be all over the world perhaps tell us where you've been Oh, I'm, I very luckily uh, managed to uh, run away to the Caribbean for a month to, to shoot Death in Paradise. Oh, represent. Oh, it's over there. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, and then I've been uh, running away and doing all the usual wild camping and, uh, and bushcrafting and stuff like that. So it's, I've, been, I've been super lucky this year and last year, of course, yeah. In, in Death great. in Paradise, that's a real coup. I mean, I sit watching that programme and thinking, God, it'd be great to get a part in that and go off yeah. to the Caribbean. And that happened oh, to I. you. How lucky did you feel when that gig came in and they were like, pat your bags, you're off? It was, I think it was a four day turnaround as well when I got the phone call. It was like, ah, pack your bags, mate, you're getting on a flight. So I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. So, uh, <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it was great. Living my best. And are you I, I mean, in Death in Paradise? I am playing a guy who yes. uh, wears clothes and he has a flowery <laughs> shirt and has some rings on and he's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did he do it? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we nearly had to. We nearly had to. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So um, you do musicals, you do acting, you've also started up, um, I do believe, your own film company as well. 
Yes, I was. I saw you the other day. Got to yeah. uh, got to flip the uh, the hand on the other foot and and got to film you. Uh, me, me lovely cameras in the background, yeah. Um, it's been lovely. We're, we're currently building a film studio over in Stockport. We're, we're called Collective Media Co. And, and yeah, we do all sorts of um, filming, just a, an independent film company. So, yeah, we uh, for all of your filming needs, basically. But it's kept us busy over lockdown. That's brilliant. How does it feel to be on the other side? Really lovely. It's amazing. I've kind of fell in love with it. When we were making this sand film, uh, we'd this sand film kind of around the, the similar time we were making a, a horror film, and uh, and that was kind of the first thing I directed and was behind the camera on. Uh, but I've always been interested in the whole kind of mechanism of filmmaking and, and theatre making. So to have the opportunity to spend then after that like a year, year and a half on uh, on just pretty much every day working on different films and stuff and, and, you know, lucky enough to get our own kit and stuff so that we can just, you know, keep rolling films out. And, and that's why kind of Sam and, and all of these films that we're working on at the moment, we're kind of able to come into fruition so quickly. It's amazing. He was here the other day. I must just say it was the weirdest thing because obviously I've done a lot of interviews with Sam. Yeah. yeah. And this was, he was, he was literally on his knees. <laughs> He was on his knees with his big pole because he was working sound. And, um, <clears throat> what? You're reading into that. My son was doing my sound for me and making his sound gorgeous, he was. Making I, um, gorgeous. I, I, no, I, I love your, I love your head. Thank you. I'm quite fond of yours as well. The, uh, the, the scotch, the Buddha head. It's beautiful. Great. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So what's next for you then, Sam? Um... Still cracking on this year, same as hopefully. Uh, like still making films, hopefully make Sam the feature. Um, hopefully get rid of this beard soon. And, uh, and yeah, crack on. We've got some exciting stuff, exciting meetings um, coming up. So yeah, fingers crossed. And, and hopefully be back on with you guys and, and catch up with you. In, oh, uh, definitely. In we need you back in the studio when it's safe to do so. Oh, need, we need people back in the studio full. This is horrendous. And uh, look, get me out. I can't handle this. Sam Redford, thank you so much for your time today. Go and enjoy your nice wine. I'm an Aribina. What are you drinking? Water. Water. Oh. Water. There we are. Sam Redford, everybody. All right, then. Now then, Sam was talking, of course, there about um, his wonderful career and everything. But you know, the, the thing that's on the increase at the moment is um, podcasts. Yes, there's so many, especially in the last 12 months. So, like, loads keep appearing all the time. Even we've got a podcast. We have got a podcast. That's right. You don't have to look at us. You can listen to us, everybody. Which yes, might be indeed. So, in uh, some cases. From, <laughs> really? From that very podcast, everybody, let's bring um, to the forefront uh, two gentlemen from a wonderful company. <laughs> I've lost my notes. Uh, from a wonderful <laughs> company called Potter Vision. Potter Vision. Potter Vision. Here we are. I found them. I found them. Hello, Potter Potter Vision, are you there? Hello. Hello. There you go. Look at you two looking nice in red and white stripes. Hey. hey. How are you two? We're very well, thank you. Tell us about Potter Vision. What is it and where did it come from? Well, it started off as a, a stage show, really. So uh, we had a stage show. We were doing it about four years. It's a parody of the first Harry Potter film. But then everything got cancelled because uh, of lockdown and, and all that malarkey. So we thought, hey, why not? get a podcast going so uh, we started a podcast where every episode is a different chapter of the book and we just have a good old laugh doing it yeah i mean i saw a tease like a trailer of the show that you were just talking about where you played different characters and kind of condensed potter uh, it was great was it disappointing when the tour got cancelled and how quickly did you turn this into a podcast um, it was bloody disappointing, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, we had some big shows coming up in uh, Manchester and London, then that got taken away. Then they've been rescheduled, then rescheduled again. And our show's really interactive as well. Uh, like, we get the audience involved, and that's really going to slow it down for a bit. Like, we get them up on stage, and we have, like, I don't know if you know about Harry Potter, but there's the uh, Bertie Bots Every Flavour Beans, and there's, like, the sequence in our show where we have, you know, swapping jelly beans between our and audience's mouths so it gets quite uh, <laughs> contagious a bit yeah so it's very disappointing oh, we can't do that for a bit until we all get vaccinated i mean for oh, me it's the worst yeah. thing about covid the fact that we've had to drop that part of the show uh, <laughs> <laughs> so where did your love for harry potter come from then 
I don't know, really. I, th- I think we just thought, we've seen the films, we've read the books, mm. we enjoy it, and, and it's kind of something that everybody seems to know and like, and I think that's why we chose it as something to to kind yeah. of poke fun at, really. Yeah, there's two things you, that people really like. You look like Harry Potter with them glasses. I know, they're a bit, they're a bit too long, aren't they? They need to be mm. more... I'm, I'm being ironic. <laughs> um, back to Malfoy, you were saying something. Go on. No, me, Malfoy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we just thought um, <laughs> there's two things that people like, really, and that's Harry Potter and Chuckle Vision. So we just thought we'd put them together. Potter Vision. Oh, I know. The theme tune is. What, to like, Chuckle Vision? Potter, Potter Vision. <laughs> Potter <laughs> Vision. <laughs> See, I should do that for you, shouldn't I? You've just done it. it. They'll use that now as a sample. <laughs> Make sure you get rolling to royalties on it, I tell you. But what you don't know about Harry Potter isn't worth knowing. I've listened to some of your podcasts and uh, you dissect it, don't you? You go from like a complete chapter and talk it through and kind of analyse it, but in a really fun way. Mm. I think I think that's the thing, isn't it? We kind of, the Harry Potter is kind of the springboard and then we end up talking about all sorts of rubbish from, I don't know, our own lives and the world and how crazy things are. I don't know what you think, Tom. I, I, I mean, we're both very fond of Harry Potter because we like grew up watching it and reading it and stuff. In a way, it's kind of like, you know, a daft old nana that you love, but you love making fun of, like with the family. Mm. Yeah, so even though we are kind of taking the mick, I think we do do it in quite a, a nice way, really. Well, that's the intention. Yeah, it feels it's a like tribute. it. It's a tribute to your love of this particular genre of film, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a, we have a so, good old time. Go on, so what will you be doing next then when we get out of this situation you're going straight back to doing the shows or are you planning something special i think i think we're going to keep doing the podcast i think we've just finished recording kind of the first book so there's another six of them to do so that'll uh, keep us busy but yeah we're hoping once kind of uh, restrictions are eased we'll get back booking venues and going out and doing it live because that's the kind of main show really and we've really missed doing it this year you know edinburgh fringe is normally where we do it every year and we really miss not doing it this august so yeah and what's the reaction been to the podcast then from anyone maybe who has seen the show uh, have you had any of them get in touch we've got some uh, yeah i think it's been quite amazing really we've had some like we've got some diehard fans who've like stuck with us and we've how long we've we done the show four years they'll come every year and then they've stayed with us watching the podcast and stuff and getting in touch, which has been really lovely, having a, having some fans, yeah. Yeah, and it's been really nice to kind of get... And, and then we've had kind of organic new fans who've just listened to the podcast and never seen the show, so it's nice to kind of get that mix, really. Hmm. So how would you sum up the show to people, then, that haven't seen it or heard it? How would you sum it up to them? I kind of think it's a bit like Harry Potter meets League of Gentlemen. Like, very, uh, it's very dark <laughs> and twisted. Like, mostly, yeah... You wouldn't bring children to it. No, it's a bit too dark for that. There's a lot of like Al Qaeda references it, and, and you know, gets quite dark at times. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird mix of. It's kind of like a farce, but then it's also silly, and that it's a bit dark. Mm. And, um, it's it's a good good bit of fun, but audiences seem to seem to enjoy it. Brilliant. And the podcast, where can that be found? If you just go to pottervision.com and you can click podcast and find it there. And it's on iTunes and Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere that you normally find podcasts. That's amazing. I think we need to finish this with an all four of us doing Potter Vision. Potter, Potter, Potter Vision. Potter Vision. Potter, Potter Vision. Potter Vision. You could just go around doing that all day, couldn't you? It's brilliant. Hey. Oh, it's good fun. And you know what? At this moment in time, everybody needs to have a smile on their face. And it made me smile. It is indeed. Uh, just before we go, let's have a look at the slide of you two as caricatures. There we go. Look at that, everybody. Hey. Hey, that's amazing. <laughs> Now, there is a new trend for uh, doing caricatures, and uh, our team have been doing one as well. We've got a lovely one from a lovely app called Tune Me. What do you think of this, gents? Have a look at this. Look at that. Hey. Hey. hey I'm forever the ugly look. sister out of Shrek. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. I'm not pleased with my eyes. You look, you're not pleased with your eyes? I'm not. I think it's lovely. I think it's nice the way you've got one looking at me and one looking for me. I think that's beautiful. I really do. It's gorgeous. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Everybody, make sure you go and check out Potter Potter version. I'll not be able to stop doing that now. I know you won't be able to. You've ruined me. You've ruined me. But yeah, find it. All you need to do is go on YouTube and put in Potter Vision and you'll find it there. 
Potter, Potter vision. Now then, have you ever watched um, anything about Ab Fab? Do you know Ab Fab? Do you like Ab Fab? Sweetie darling. <laughs> now I remember when we were younger. <laughs> this takes me right back. Because it was the first time I'd ever been put in a dress and I was Scylla Black in yes, a variety show were. we did just round the corner at the green room. And who were you in that show? Well, I was obviously the lead in it, the Jennifer Saunders character. <laughs> now, you must be aware that there is a plethora of wonderful actresses in that show. And uh, one lady has decided to come on board with the team here at your Manchester. And Her it's name... not Safi. It's not Safi, no, no. All bubbles. All bubbles, no. Oh, Patsy and Adina. Yeah. Oh, nevertheless. Adina was me. Never the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't I'm like your sure. screen. I don't like it. I do like a kiss. <laughs> Go on, put your lips on it. Go on. That's it. I was wiping my bum on that before. Oh. Right. Oh, okay, everybody. So, let us have a look at this wonderful VT <laughs> from one of the cast of Ab Fab. And, of course, Mr. Rutus, Mr. Rutus, everybody. It is, of course, the gorgeous Harriet Thorpe joining us with a little bit of cookery for a minute. Go! <laughs> It's time for a 1970s dinner party revival. Salmon mousse. Back in time we go. Golden rule, clean your surfaces. Add half an ounce of gelatin to a quarter pint of water. Soak for five minutes, then place on a low heat till clear. Stir in a quarter pint of chicken stock, then leave to cool. Now let's wake up those 1970s taste buds with a quarter pint of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, a teaspoon of Worcester sauce, and a teaspoon of onion juice. <coughs> onion juice? Oh, well, I'm sure it tastes nice. Whatever. Straining that stock and gelatin, adding a pinch of paprika for that 70s zing. Then mix in a pound of tin salmon. Add a quarter pint of lightly whipped double cream. For health reasons, obviously, it's calcium. And mix well. If you want a smoother mousse, pop it into the blender. Or just pour into your mould or ramekins and chill for at least six hours. Place the mould upside down in warm water to loosen, then serve. Lovely with some freshly baked soda bread. And I'll show you how to do that next time. A delish fish dish from the 1970s. Thank you, Salmon Moose. Hey, Salmon Moose. Oh, do you know, isn't she fabulous? She, she's, she's absolutely, absolutely fabulous. fabulous. We're getting some comments in today, everybody. Let's go and see what we've got. Uh, yeah, go on, bring it up. Here we go. Oh, no. Uh, hi, Shell and Belinda. That's from Simon Higginbottoms. Hello, Simon Higginbottoms. Uh, hi. Who else have we got today? Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> I can't and see. Sam B. Been uh, loving Ackley Bridge. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Who else is there? Uh, let's have another one. Go on, random. Go. There we go. Hello, lovelies. Hope you're doing okay. We are doing okay. Yes, we are. We are very lucky. We are doing okay. We're staying safe and uh, fingers crossed healthy. We're, we're doing our bit. Yes. Ah, we're doing our bit, everybody. I hope you guys are okay and I <sighs> hope we're uh, bringing a smile to your Wednesday night. Well, we're trying. It's, it's so strange, isn't it? It really is just bizarre. Do you know what? What? I wish yeah. I had your plethora of hairstyles. Well, this one was done by the Weave Wizard. I have to say, it was done by the Weave Wizard, and it, it what was. What am I going to do? Well, my roots are showing already. Mine are too. Let's be honest. You're lucky I've got this on because under here, I look like Phil Mitchell on a day off, don't I? Really? So. <laughs> hey, I might wear one of yours next week. I dare you. Okay. We, we actually did. We got you a hairstyle. We got you one. You can wear it next week. We've got You're that. Done. You're you right. won't even know that it's, it's not you. Right, everybody. I'm guessing you're all doing a little bit of reading at the moment. Books are ever so important. Um, we were talking about literature, and we're going to do a little bit more of it this evening as well. Uh, so if you do have a favourite book or anything, um, then let us know what your favourite book is, and we'll discuss. We might even start a little old book club, everybody. What's your favourite book at the minute? My favourite book, what am I reading at the moment? I am reading 60 Years of Coronation Street and... Uh, Anton Dex, oh, autobiographer. I've just finished Philip Schofield. Was it good? Brilliant. Did you talk about the gopher? It did. And how that came about? It was, oh, it was great. That oh. gopher, I swear, honestly, it used to scare me on a Saturday, you know. Why? Well, you know when you're sort of coming round from a night out and you switch on television and what can only be described as your head feels like concrete and you've got a piece of sort of spit connected to the window which was well, like, 10 at the time yeah <laughs> and uh, honestly you, you you start coming around and there's this this gopher 
Mm. You must be the only one who didn't like Gordon the Gopher. I have my own. They brought them out. Did yeah. you have your hand up a puppet? It's a puppet. It's a puppet. Look, sutty with no clothes on. Sutty Bet fainting. Sutty in the nude. Sutty what laughing. What? <laughs> <laughs> a lady of many a talent. <laughs> yes, because you can do it with three fingers. Now listen! Uh, <laughs> what have you been reading? I've got, I'm going. What have you been reading? You can't, you're wired in. What have you been reading at the moment? Right, so I finished Philip Schofield. Did I'm, you? I'm next with Blood Orange. <laughs> Wanted to get my hands on it for ages. God, it gets worse. What? Blood Orange. Blood Orange, right. yeah. Right. It's, um, it's like a... Well, not a who done it, but it's no. kind of like psychological thriller. Oh, I know. Get my teeth stuck into that. that. There was a bit of a good one. Was it some Robert Grisham? No, John Chism? Grisham. Gr Grisham. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what book that was, but it was good. He's good. Now there's lots of good books around, but the reason we're talking about books is because we've got our next two guests are connected to books. They are indeed. Yes. They are. What's that? Right. Okay. So what we're going to do now then is we are going to talk. <laughs> I've missed you. We are going to talk because I knew it was my line. We are going to be talking now about queer literature, everybody. Queer literature. So let us meet this lovely gentleman here. Hello, sir. How are you? Very good. Thank you, yourselves. You're looking marvellous. You've been working out, Flower. Uh, have I? Uh, hell, I've been overeating and under-exercising, if anything. Being lazy with books. <laughs> Well, you just lift books, can't you? Books are just as heavy as weights. It, it, it could be done, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Nothing wrong with that. So why um, would we want to talk about um, queer um, literature or LGBT literature? Why, why is it so important for people, um, do you think, to be focusing on these different genres of books? For, for so many different reasons, obviously depending on the type of genre, so whether it be you want to find out about the history and the journey of LGBT people or whether you just want to find yourself within literature you know um i think you know if you want to be reading a romance novel there's so many only so much you can read where you don't find yourself within the literature itself um so i think that's really important yeah i mean i was reading a bit about you know this company that you've set up where you provide literature that people can go to and it was basically because you found that there was no big bookstores providing that and, and that really shocked yeah. me i was like you have so many sections why why <laughs> wasn't there an area you know well, I, I was really shocked with you know there's a down on deansgate they've got the huge water stones it's over three stores and it's uh, three stories and it's got the whole building i remember going in there and asking um you know could you point me in the, in the right direction for, for lgbt literature mm -hmm. and they said we don't have a section anymore um, and they even went on to say we don't even have a section on our website anymore to support it and if i wanted to find queer literature or queer authors i'd have to go home find it on the internet and then go back to store and they would find it within its relevant section um, and I thought that, that's not great for you know a shy 18 year old wanting to find a book about coming out or discovering their sexuality I at 18 definitely wasn't confident enough to walk into a big shop and ask somebody excuse me can you can you help me find out about a book about my sexuality it would never have happened no a lot of books were back in the day even when I was young, they were they were relegated to the. You, you, if you wanted an LGBT book, they were kind of they, they you were suggested that you were just going to read sex books. There wasn't anything with a particular narrative other than you know top shelf magazines, and that was kind of it. Really, there wasn't really that emphasis on them. So that's all changing, though, is yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think of the Booker Prize, which is which is kind of like the Oscars for books, um, that was just won by an LGBT title. Uh, and and this, that's happening so much now. Um, but I mean, we stock over 1,200 different titles and none of them are that top shelf book that you're on about. Although there are a couple of picture books for your coffee table that might go into that category. Um, but otherwise it's, it's fantasy novels, it's autobiographies. Um, that there's just so much great queer literature out there that isn't being exposed by anybody, so. You know, so that, how long that has one. this been running then now? How long have you been doing um, we, LGBT lit? So we've been physically selling about four months 
Um, and we're, we're doing fantastic. I think that it started just before lockdown kicked in. So it has taken us quite a while to get all of the logis logistics and the site up and running and getting publishers and, our, and distributors on board. Um, but yeah, four months of actually selling now and it seems to be working really well. Fantastic. And you don't just ship to the UK, do you? You kind of go everywhere, do you? Yeah, ship internationally, because what we found was there's lots of people in places like Spain, um, Italy, Netherlands, France, who, who want to get hold of this literature. But of course, they don't print in English over there. So um, we, we've, we've had quite a, quite a lot of hefty, hefty uh, packages being sent abroad as well. Now, you mentioned earlier on about trying to find a book, you know, that explains sexuality and coming out. Was there any particular book that you have found helpful over the years that you would recommend to anybody out there? Um, I wouldn't necessarily a specific one, only because there's such a spectrum. So depending on where you feel you might be, there's a plethora of books. But uh, Meg John Barker does some fantastic graphic guides around gender, sexuality, um, and, and they're really simply put and there's no dogma behind them and there's no you should fit into this this or this it teaches people to freely express themselves wherever they sit on that spectrum um and wherever their preferences may may lie as well it's it's good that there is this real sort of focus on lgbt plus literature um where do you see the future for all this going then what's the ultimate ambition um, the next ambition is a store in the city centre, hopefully. So we're, we're putting plans in place at the moment. The, the, the next stage is stocking every single book and distributing it. But um, if we can have the option of a storefront, then we, we definitely want somewhere that people could come in, browse, get recommendations and kind of experience us as a brand. That's that would be brilliant. That sounds absolutely amazing. And well done to yourself for doing this as well, because like I say, things are different. Uh, have improved a little bit these days since my day, but they're, they're nowhere near where they should be. They're really not. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if they want to get hold of these books from yourself, whereabouts do they go doing that? Uh, either just search the internet for Queerlit or the website address is uh, queerlit.co.uk. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today, Cocker. Thank you. See? Oh, books. I love that logo as well, those lips. Amazing. Now then, we are moving on. I've got a dirty, it's because I've not seen you in forever. My mind's everywhere. It really is. You look so stunning. Have you got it might, it might be the leather pants that I'm wearing underneath. Yeah. Might be my leather pants and that I'm look, wearing. I've got my shoes on, you can't see them. We can, oh, we we can, can see that. the shoes. Ooh. Look, can we have a, can we have a close up on shell shoes, please? Thank you. Look, look at that. Look. Just for you. Do you know what? Yes. I got a chance to dress up tonight. Is this you dressed up? Is it? I know you don't oh, get to do it. Do like you? a night out. I know. Honestly, I don't want to go home. Well, you don't have to. We've got vodka. We can stay here all night. It's not a problem. <laughs> don't tell me that. Ah, I bet you're driving though, aren't you? Yeah, I am. That's all right. Oh, I've got to go home to the puppy. Oh. Not the kids and the husband. <laughs> We've got so many things coming your way over the next course of the next few weeks, everybody. Homeschooling, Jesus. I uh, know, but if you do want to be part, <laughs> if you do want to be part of our show, I got dressed show... up to go to Aldi at the weekend. <laughs> I went to Aldi and the tip, and I got dressed up. Did you really? How sad is you that? You did, didn't you? I did. You're not even joking, are you? I'm not joking. <laughs> I'll stop interrupting you now. <laughs> Um, we're gonna... I'm only doing it because I love you. Picture... Oh, there's my legs. I'm picturing that. That's amazing. Right. Um, do... Yeah, lovely. We are, of course... Imagine throwing rubbish into the tip with a really posh colour. Yeah. Yeah. I can. I do it every day. Cheshire. Cheshire through and through. I'm not really. Born, born in Wigan. I know. With a... With a wig and like dress. You like your I too today. <laughs> I'm on a diet though. I've had a lovely linguine. Now we are of course now going to be talking about books, everybody. And uh, one particular book has, has took my absolute focus over the last few weeks. And it's a book about the regeneration of Manchester. And it's not just like from this year to, you know, perhaps last year. This is 30 years. 30. 
And you know, you look at it, and I looked at it earlier, and how far we've come, and how that skyline of Manchester have changed. It's changed. Now, this is from a gentleman called Len Grant. Now, he was uh, responsible for a book called The Rush Home Sketcher. Let's have a look in this book, shall we? Because it's quite sensational. Um, it really is a fabulous little book here. And uh, look, there's, there's, there's loads of drawings in it. Uh, sketches it's not very often you see a proper sketchbook these days where you know proper nice colored picture i mean you spoke that looks like me out of um out of outfit it really does you can you can see that can't you I, definitely it's definitely. great likeness it's, it's good likeness isn't it and it's just amazing so i suppose what we should do then is we should talk to the person responsible for these two books. Mr. Len Grant joins us now. Good evening, sir. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good evening to you both. I'm sorry so I haven't dressed up. <laughs> you have. I'm sorry, Cheryl. I haven't. Uh, I should have made a bit more of an effort. <laughs> so tell us first of all about the, the, this book, The Rush Home Sketcher. I have to say, um, I, I've been engrossed in the other one for the past two days since you sent us a bit, the Rush Home Sketcher, everybody. Um, talk us through the inspiration for this and, and how you went about creating it. Well, we're doing it a bit, little bit backwards. Uh, I've been a photographer for about 30 years and then about five years ago I, I took up sketching. Um, and then I kind of had the courage to do a whole project just about Rush Home. I live in Withington and would cycle through Rush Home uh, almost every day when we could. Um, and um, I decided to kind of spend my weekends and evenings for a whole year. Uh, first I did a blog called The Rush Home Sketcher, and it was a, it's a blog which you can still see. I think it's therushomesketcher.co.uk. And then I made a book. Um, so this is my first sketching book. It's about my 20th book. But this is my first sketching book. All the other books are to do with photographs. I do think if you've got an eye for photography, I think you are going to be able to turn your hand to art. And you clearly have done that very well. Oh, and well, thank great. you, Cheryl. It is. It's really great to see those places that I know in Rush Home, but yeah. presented in a completely different way. So that's brilliant. That's something that's, like you say, fairly a new skill. But this... This oh my God! This is book absolutely Epic. everything. Now this is called uh, Regeneration Manchester. This is thirty years, thirty years, everybody of storytelling. That's that's I'm flicking through this. Honestly, it is absolutely just brilliant. Uh, so where Thank did you. this all start from you then? Well, I became a photographer when I was thirty years old. So you can guess if this is thirty years of it, you can uh, do the maths. Uh, but I became a freelance photographer. <laughs> That's right. I took it up. I was very young when I took it up. Um, and I became, it smells great as well, doesn't it? This one it smells does. wonderful. Do you know, I was thinking that before. Let's have a look inside this book, shall we? And it's a hardback book as well, which I thought yes. was good. Really yes. nice feel. Sorry, I distracted myself when I was smelling it. Uh, so I became a photographer 30 years ago, and I've been lucky enough to follow the regeneration of Manchester. We've done the Bridgewater Hall, the Arena, the Lowry, the Imperial War Museum, uh, New Islington, Ancoat, East Manchester, etc., etc. And uh, last year I kind of decided, because I was locked down and a lot of my work had dried up, to kind of put it all together in one book. So that's how I've spent lockdown one, really, is... Uh, is making a retrospective book. But and you've, you've really captured the history of Manchester because we are an industrial city, aren't we? And this is just a perfect snapshot of those years and these iconic buildings. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? When you look back on it, it also included the rebuilding after the, after the bomb. Yeah. And you see those photographs, which we've forgotten about now, when the city was totally wrapped up in plastic. Um, and you show those to people who, who weren't here um, all those years ago, and you know they just—it's yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible how things have changed. Do you remember what Ancoats was like and what Hume was like? Yeah, I do. It was—they were all right. We were talking before about the the um, ninety-six. The, yeah, the bomb. Yeah, the bomb. The where we bomb. both were, and just because the memories. I think to anybody that's been around for a little while. 
this book just is, is, it's not just a book, it actually is a memory stirrer. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many things that have gone on that have changed Manchester, that have made Manchester and have improved Manchester. How, how did that feel for you when you compiled this, looking at your old pictures and comparing them with the new? Well, what, what was interesting is I've done lots of books before, so I've done a book particularly about the Lowry or the Imperial, or the, um, the Bridgewater Hall. Uh, but I'd already did, always done it for somebody else. So this time I was kind of doing it for myself. So as you see in the book, there's lots of kind of references um, to my own situation and how I was feeling also in my own creative journey, which wasn't always very straightforward. Mm. I also like the fact that you capture these real people and yeah. quite characters. You know, there's a, a, a lovely image of a lady who's heavily pregnant towards yeah, the yeah. end of the book. And you actually tell us a story. I mean, if you want to kind of like tell us a little bit about it now, of, of just getting her to appear in the book. Yes, so I, um, it was about, well, it was exactly 17 years ago because uh, and I was in uh, uh, the pie shop, the Krusty Cobb in, in Beswick, um, and I saw this heavily pregnant woman, and I plucked up the courage to, um, to, to ask her to be photographed. That's the picture there. Yeah. Um, and we, we went back to, um, to her partner's house, and I photographed her there. And I tracked her down for this book, so I knew somebody who might know her, and I tracked her down and asked her permission whether I could use the book and the, story, the, the picture and the story in this new book. And then she told me that the next day after I photographed her, she gave birth, um, and her son is now 17 years old. Wow. wow. Oh. And of course, my, my favourite story is about um, Agnes, I think she's called, Agnes Lewis. Yes, yes. Agnes. Tell us about that. So Agnes um, lived on the uh, Cardroom estate, which was this uh, rather run-down estate. I won't be able to find it now. There's 176 pages in here. Oh, yes, here we are. Page oh, look at that. There we go. So this is, yeah. this is Agnes, who... Um, who lived on the Cardroom estate, which uh, has now obviously been demolished and made into New Islington. Um, and I photographed her as part of my work, but then I got to know her really quite well. And even after my commission had finished, I'd go around to her place and I'd do some errands for her. I took her once to uh, the, the ASDA up in Eastlands to get her eyes tested and things like that. And then when she, when she died, and she was looked after by all her neighbours. Uh, she was in hospital for a little while, but her neighbours were really, really great. Um, and she didn't have any family, so she was looked after by neighbours. And when she died, the neighbours invited me to, um, to make a, a speech at the funeral to do her eulogy, which was a real honour. And, uh, yeah, that was one of my highlights. Oh, wow. I mean, that, that's special. And it is... Like you say, memories, people, places, times. You, you're great. dead right, it's Shell. I mean, what, what, Shell, you, you, you put your finger on it, really, because although it's about the regeneration of Manchester and there's lots of pictures of buildings being built, it's always, my story has always been about the people doing it, the people who are affected by it, the people who are making decisions about it. Because whatever we say about regeneration, we see cranes and we see new buildings. Essentially, it's about people, and it's about, it's about people's lives, and that's, so you know... I'm glad that this got made, because yeah. it very nearly didn't, did it, Len? <laughs> it's true. You know, if it hadn't been for lockdown, I wouldn't have made that book. And, um, it, it, as you say, it's a big, chunky book, and I, I ran a crowdfunder campaign. So, for all the people who um, put, you know, put some money towards it, they've got all their names in the back of the book. Um, I couldn't have done it without them. Oh, brilliant. Let's give a shout out to one of them. Oh, go on. <laughs> a shout out to one of the people. All oh, right, in the back of the book. Right, yeah. here we go, here we go, here we go. Right. Go on, pick oh, one random. Go. Oh, it's so lovely. Michael Simpson, shout out to you. Ah. Andy Walsh <laughs> and uh, Sarah Rawlings. A massive thanks because it is an absolutely lovely book. Well done on it, Len. Where do people get hold of this from, Len? 
So they can get it from my website, yes, please. Um, and if people just search uh, Len Grant, uh, there's only one of me, um, and they'll get to my website, or just Len Grant, uh, Big Cartel, uh, and they'll get to my online shop. Thank you very much. That's terrific. No at all. Thank you for yeah. doing this for us, because this is just, honestly, I have. Anybody that's been bobbing around the studio over the last couple of days will have been engrossed. Because it's just fabulous. So I hope everybody goes out and gets this lovely book, Regeneration Manchester, or of course you can get the Rush Home Sketcher as well. Rush Home Sketcher, available yeah. From our lovely Len Grant there. Thank you so much for your time. An absolute pleasure talking to you, Len. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. It's great. Oh, Thank take you. care. Thank you. I must just say as well, uh, we were struggling to get the books. We were struggling to get them. And Len, bless his cotton socks, sent an Uber. Oh. With just two books in. Nobody else, the driver and the, the books, Did all the way to our studio. Did you not with it? No. Damn. I liked Len as well. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you, Flower Pot. I've missed you. <laughs> but as you've been looking out, the, the, we don't even. This is the good thing about the studio this week, everybody. Our studio is actually leaking again, everybody. It's lovely. Big shout out to the people that run this studio. Our studio has been leaking over our lovely new set that we're having made, which we can't show you as yet. Uh, but um, other than that, it's been raining. It's not been a glorious day. Is this for the moment I've always been waiting for? <laughs> Can I introduce him? Go on. Oh, it's the weather with Paul Rudd. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a bit chilly willy out here. Some might even say it's brass monkeys. Brr. Good evening, Belle. Good evening, Shell. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to this week's weather forecast with me, Paul Rudd. We've had plenty of rain, and there's plenty more to come, and we have some snow on the horizon as well. So let's see what I have in store for you weather-wise this week. Here's this week's weather outlook. Here's my weather maps. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Thursday is going to look sunny, cloudy with outbreaks of rain with the temperatures of 3. Friday is going to look like snow with the temperatures of 3. Come Saturday it's going to look cloudy with the temperatures of 3. And on Sunday it will rain with the temperatures of 3. So don't forget ladies and gents, keep those extremities covered up. You don't want that Jack Frost to bite them, do you? Ouch! And now it's time to hand over back to this fabulous pair. It's the one and only Belinda Scandal and the ever so beautiful Michelle Eagleton for this week's episode of Your Manchester. Have you noticed he's not just doing Your Manchester anymore he's now? He's jumping! He's jumping! He called me beautiful. He called you beautiful. Oh. He does wear glasses. No! He hasn't seen me in me like pants in the morning. <laughs> my joggers. Joggers and no makeup, that's what it'd be back to. I'd be like Cinderella. How about if you <gasps> zoom conversation to you? That's it. Do what? Back to being Cinderella. <laughs> Take my lashes off. You will play with the ball. You're cheeky. Now then, we've got a marvellous couple of specials coming up for you in the next few weeks. On the 3rd, on the 3rd of February, we are of course going to be celebrating LGBT History Month by collating together some of my favourite LGBT plus people in the world and we're going to be discussing it live on the show. The history, the history, how things have changed, how things have improved for the LGBT community. We're also going to be following that the week after by doing a special bit of Chinese New Year. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yes, it's all going on. You're back next week, aren't you? Back next week. And yeah. we have got a wonderful show lined up for you next week as well. And I'm telling you no more about that. OK. It's going to be sensational. You don't have to do any homework then, do I? No, no, there'll be a, no, no. What I'm basically saying is I can't remember. No. Nevertheless, everybody, uh, it's been a, have we got any more comments quickly before we go? Anything that we want to quickly dive into? Oh, I know what we need to do as well, because we've not done that, we said we would. Uh, there we go. Uh, good evening. Well, but the one above it, let's go to the one above it. That's a bit more excitable. There we are. I have no idea why... Uh, <laughs> See, you, you can read that. I've not got my glasses I on. can't read it. That's why I didn't say a word. It's all blurred to me. 
<laughs> it's all blurred. It's all Chinese. Uh, well, At least it will be. was there. Thank you so much for watching. Yes. It's been great to be back. And do not get down. Just before you go, as always, we want to run these helpline numbers with you, which we should have done really in the first place. So if you are feeling a bit down, go on. If you are feeling a bit down, feel free to get hold of the Samaritans on 116123. Uh, mind on 0800-123-3393. Or calm on 0800-58-58-58. Or saying on 0300-304-7000. I need an item. We got through that. We had a VT for that, but we had to read it instead. Nevertheless, to everybody else that's watching, if you want to get involved in our show and you feel like advertising with us, why not? Simply do this. We're going through an unprecedented time. The world may be changing, but we are coming through this. We are your Manchester. We're Manchester's number one chat show, and our chosen topic is always you. We specialise in a unique form of sponsorship and advertising that brings your brand to the forefront of conversation, both in Manchester and its surrounding areas. Your Manchester is returning, so get involved, become a sponsor or an advertising partner. We are coming through this. We are your Manchester. Yes, we are your Manchester. I'm Michelle Eagleton. And this I'm is Belinda Scandal. Yes. And we've had a great night. I've had a great night. Right. I've had a great... <laughs> I'm going to go home now. <laughs> you don't want to go home at all, do you? I don't want to go home. Oh. No. That's like a, a Dorothy gone wrong. <laughs> I'd like I don't to want to click my ruby slippers. Oh, but you don't have to go on straight away. You can stay. I mean, we've got to record the podcast yet. This and is do true. The, and do the pictures for the, the naked calendar. Um, oh, did we not tell you about that? Oh, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we're doing a naked calendar. Basically, they don't need to take pictures of me. They're just going to superimpose my face on Jack of the Hutt. No one wants to see my jelly top buttons. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a chance. Oh, shall I say bye from me then? <laughs> say bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take say care. Bye. Thanks for watching this week's episode of... Your, Your Manchester. Manchester.